What's good, what's good to good motherfucking morning. What it do, Turb Nation? What it do? I'm back again with the preview. This time it's week four, opponent Kent State. Kent State, this might be probably this team right here. It's a better team than um, Illinois was. Even though Illinois became a tougher game only because we were on the road, the crowd got into it, to be honest. We had a chance to put them away there early in the second half, but we fumbled the ball. This Kent State team is better than that team. And they might even give us a tougher game at home than Kent, uh, Illinois gave us. Now, Illinois, we kind of shot ourselves in the foot. So that game a little, got a little closer than it really was on the stat. Against this ball club, if we make the same mistake we made against Illinois, we're going to lose, even though we're at home. Because this team, this Kent State ball club, Kent State Golden Flashers, are going on the road two weeks out of the three ball games. And two out of the three, they played three games so far. They won and two. Let me start that off. Kent State um, Golden Flashers, they won and two come into College Park. They've played two top 10 opponents in Iowa and Texas A&M in week one. And to be honest, they competed in both games. And they really competed in both games. To me, they competed. They showed themselves to be one of the better um, um, not P5 teams. Like, the, you know, the, uh, I forgot what you call those, those G5 uh, teams. To me, they, they've proven themselves to be one of the better teams um, in their league, the MAC, going forward. Now, I expect them to have a pretty good season this year and when they get into their conference schedule because right now they played they played some of the rough schedule any team can play in the country so let's start off week one uh they lost to texas a and m 41 10 a game that was only 10 3 texas a and m going to halftime including holding texas a and m scoreless that entire second quarter that's impressive thing to do because that texas a and m ball club is one of the reasons why they're in the top 10 was their offense people are very excited about the offense and this Texas, this Kent State team, not only um, did they hold them down in the first half, but they they forced about three turnovers again in that ball game in the first half, and they won the turnover battle in that first ball game five to one. That's fucking impressive against a top ten team in their house, and not just in their house. Calfield is one of the hardest places to play in the road, one of the hardest, loudest places to play. For this team to go in there, this Golden Flashes team to go in there, and to me, they are physical them. Even though they end up losing on the scoreboard, because they end up getting outscored in the second half. I think it was like, what was it? It was like 31-7, um, and they outscored them by, to, to win 41-10. But that ball game was neck and neck in the first half at Texas A&M. So just to give you guys a, a, a kind of idea what kind of ball clubs come into College Park, these guys will not be intimidated. This Texas a and team got about five to six starters on their team. That, that really shouldn't be in college football. But because of the COVID rule, the rule um, coming back and giving guys another year to come back, Maryland benefited it too with Sam um, Okua Yunu. And he's playing way more better than he's ever played his four years in college football. So the guys were taking advantage of that COVID rule. And they, they, they be wrecking shit for their teams. They wrecking shit. Because, you know, they know it's their last year. And quite frankly, it was a kind of a lucky bonus and gifts they, they got given by the NCAA. And these guys are taking advantage of it. And this ball club, or probably more so than any other ball club in the country, benefited from that role because many of their starters came back. And these guys have been together for three, four years. Now, they've lost some guys to like other P5 teams, like a guy who used to be in, in Maryland named um, Quantris Knight. He used to play there like last year, had a pretty good ball club, but then he left because of the COVID. So, and now he's at UCLA, Quantris Knight is, and he, I'm even hearing scouts talking about him as a pro prospect. So shout out to Quantus Knight. I was very difficult on him. I have video here when I really went at his neck when he left because of some of the things he said leaving. So I wasn't happy about, but I'm happy for the guy. He's went to UCLA and had a pretty a very productive season to the start of the season so far. And he's even one of the um, guys that on the senior ball watch list. Shout out to him. All right. But long story short, this Kent State Ball Club team is not intimidated. Again, they, they were... In the ball game and at Texas A&M week one, they lost 41-10. They come back week two at home against VMI, a school that our backup quarterback, Rich Yunduski, used to play at. And we're just playing at just this past um, this past winter break when he was still out there playing for them. So he probably could have been playing there right now uh, if not for Maryland coming in there and getting him out of there. So, But Rich Yunduski is a guy who some NFL scout think he could have been an NFL draft pick last year had he left. VMI, but he chose to transfer to Maryland and take advantage of the convict rule. It's another guy that took advantage of the rule. 
and he thank God he did because Merlin have an issue behind Torlia. In case something happens to Torlia, God forbid, knock on wood, that's the full law. But you need backups in the big team. You need quality backups. And Riz is a quality backup. So thank God he came in. But his school, VMI, got punished in week two by this Kent State ball club, 60 to 10. That ball club, that ball game was not close at all. They put up almost 700 yards in total offense, including almost 400 yards rushing. That's what you're supposed to do when you play against a team like that. They destroyed them in their house. Part of his property was still bitter and salty by what happened in week one against Texas A&M because that's a ball game. That, like I said, they were in there in the first half, but things just fall apart in the second half. Texas A&M came back and dominated the ball game. Now, they ended up throwing two INTs in the second half. That didn't help. All right? Now, uh, in week three, just last week against Iowa, another top 10 team, they went on the road and they lost 37. Again, that's another ball club that was only a ball game that was only 13-6 at halftime. They were in it. They were in it. 13-6 at halftime, they ended up losing 37. You know what I'm saying? Like 13-7 at halftime, and they ended up losing 30-7. to So again, they, they were right. They've been right in it to begin the year against some of the better teams in the country. Mind you, this is I watched that whole ball game against Iowa last week because we'll play Iowa after them next week after this Kent State ball club will play Iowa. The Iowa team don't look very good to me. Their defense come, came into the game with all the accolades, their pass defense, their DBs and all that, with a lot of turnovers created. But against um, this Kent State team, they struggle uh, on defense. Kent State was able to move the ball. There are things more like a take advantage of on their pass defense um, that I can't wait for that matchup next week. But first, first things first, we gotta handle our business against this very, very experienced Kent State Ball Club. This team will not be afraid of Maryland, and they will come in there actually believe that they can upset us. So it's up to us to come out here in the first quarter and smack them in the mouth. That's what you do with a team like this that played good teams, that went on the road early on. They're going to come in feeling confident. They can beat you. So it's up to Maryland to come in there and show them you're not going to have hitters. Because I felt like this K-State team, they have physical Texas a and in week one. But it just got tired in the second half. I guess um, Iowa... An Iowa team that you saw what they did to Iowa State in their place. Iowa has a, a Iowa has it in them to out tough people, but they, I felt like that Kent State ball club was not out tough last week. They were in it, including a late fourth down stop to show they would keep fighting. They were still fighting. So again, Maryland got to watch out for that. But um, yeah, Texas A and M, um, they lost. They lost to Iowa, thirty seven, uh, thirty to seven. So again, two of their losses. This year, both of their losses are to, uh, to top 10 team. The one team they didn't play that, that wasn't like, that wasn't very good, they punished them, all right? So, again, um, Texas A&M, including scholars, to say, yep, I'm just getting, like, reading some of this. They want a turn of a battle, all right? Now, let's go to, let, let me give you guys more notes on this um, team. They rushed for 226 yards at Texas A&M. That's a key note I, let, I put on my notes. It's very important. These guys went on the road against the SEC ball club in week one. When you know that SC Ball Club has been talking all summer long to stop the run, to stop you guys, and they went in there and rushed for over 200 yards at Texas a and Now, Texas a and ended up rushing for 301, 303, but the fact that they went on the road and rushed for two over 200 yards, I guess the top 10, top 5 team, that's, ma that's massive, guys. It shows me they have attitude. The offensive line has an attitude about them. Maryland is going to have their hands put out the line. It's really going to get tested this game, probably more than any other game this season yet. Like, these guys have attitude. For you to go on the road against a top 10 team and rush for 200 yards, you have to have attitude. They have attitude, all right? Now, they did give up 9 of 13 third down. That's another thing that I've noticed is a trend of them on their defense. Now, I'm going to get to their defense. It's 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 a defense that can cause problems for Maryland. They got playmakers, all right? When you have playmakers, you can create issues for teams because you, when you can take the ball away, you are always a threat on defense. Even if you give up yards, the point is to, st to stop the other team from scoring. And there's no better way you can do it on defense than taking the ball away. All right? Now, they did allow 9, nine of 13 third downs against um, uh, Texas A&M. And they allowed eight, 8 of 16 against Iowa. So that's one of the red areas that I've noticed about them is their third down defense isn't very good. So it tends to keep them on the field longer, and over time they get burned out. That's one of the reasons why they've lost the time of possession in both of the losses massively. Again, if Merlin got to win this game, you got to hit these guys early, get up early, and then just out-physical them, out-tough them, because they won't go away. 
We're gonna have to keep hating them, keep smacking them until they, they, uh, they just get tired out. We're gonna have to wound them out, all right? Again, now, against um, against BMI, these guys have fought. My, oh, that's another thing I forgot. They, they had four INTs at Texas A&M. Guys, that's fucking massive. These dudes went to Texas A&M, not only rushed for 200 yards, but they picked them up four times. They picked up a top 10 team in their house four times. They had four INTs. They forced five turnovers, guys, against a top 10 team in their house. They, they forced five turnovers. They only gave it up one, so they won it five to one. They had one fumble recovery and four INTs. That's fucking impressive, guys. You know, I got to watch out for that. And then they followed that up after losing that game. They followed that up in week two against BMI with four more INTs. So clearly, this defense can play the ball. They have ball players. They have playmakers on defense. Guys that if we, if we throw Aaron passes, these guys will take advantage of those passes. We can't allow the ball to get tipped. We gotta, uh, we gotta have sticky. So far, we, we've been very good with drops. We haven't had many drops. We that gotta continue because you don't want to drop the ball with these guys, or have the ball tipped with these guys around. They will pick it off. They've proven it all season against some some elite competition. Now, last week against Iowa, they didn't have no turnover, but they did get a fumble recovery. They did force a fumble recovery. A fumble recovery that was added to it because it was a massive hit that made the Iowa ball carrier cough it up. It wasn't like some weak Iowa shit that made Iowa fumble it. It was a massive hit that a Kent State player put on an Iowa player that made him fumble the ball. I watched the game. All right? So, guys, you got to watch out for that. All right? This team can play. This Kent State team can play. No one got to come in ready to ball. All right. So again, now they held Iowa to just 5.6 yards of play on defense. That's massive. That's mind you against. Uh, that's one of the things that cost them in that ball game against Texas A&M. They couldn't get off the field and they got worn out in the second half. Against Iowa, they, again it was the same thing. They couldn't get off the field because they, they allowed eight of 16 third down. However, in those early downs, they were outstanding. When you held a team on their house, a top 10 team to just 5.6 yards of play. That was outstanding. That's you competing play by play. They were competing early plays. I just think they couldn't get off the field. So Maryland got to really attack there on third down, trying to get yourself to third and short and keep these guys on the field and burn them out because they play hard. They're going to keep playing hard, all right? Now, their head coach used to be the, the offensive coordinator at Syracuse back when they came in college back that year when we smoked them. So this guy is going to know a lot of things. He he's going to bring these guys to college park feeling confident they can win at Maryland. All right? If not anything, he's going to be looking for revenge. Because we made that offense, that Syracuse offense that year, look very pedestrian. After the previous year, they were dominating the ACC, including almost upsetting Clemson. So, again, this guy, Maryland got – Kent State has a lot of – not only do they have a good staff, but they have a lot of upperclassmen, grad seniors, guys who have been in the program three, four years – who are, who are in there too deep. So they ain't going to be intimidated. These guys are experienced. They've been on the road already again, in tough environments. They're going to come into college park feeling like they can beat us. It's up to us to go up early and keep pounding. All right? Now, I'm going to give you some of their key players. These guys, some, some of these guys, um, are, I'm even hearing about um, scouts talk about as NFL players, including their quarterback. The quarterback, Daniel, um, Daniel Crump. Good player. Daniel Crump is a cool player, 6'3", 207, number seven. Grad senior, another grad senior, guy who taking advantage of that COVID rule of coming back to play every year. Now, on his career, this is why I think this guy is a good player. This guy could, could possibly be an NFL player because he's a good decision maker. For his career, Daniel Crump has only thrown eight INTs, and two of them came this year. He's thrown eight INTs, and two of them are this year. In just three games, he's thrown two, so he's off to a, a, a slow start. But in his career, he's thrown 37 touchdowns to just eight INTs. That's a ridiculous touchdown to INT ratio. That's what you want from your quarterback. Take care of the ball. And he, he has a good arm. He doesn't he's not have the strongest arm, but he's have a good enough arm and he's very accurate. Last week against Iowa, he didn't really have much time in the pocket. But a few times against him pocket, he threw bullets. He threw accurate passes. So again. Good player that I see, I can see playing in the NFL. Because when you don't, when you, when you when you make good decisions as a quarterback and you have an adequate arm, you have a chance to play in the league. You have a chance, all right? Now, last year his best year was 2019. 
when you throw for 20 touchdowns and just two INTs and over 2,600 passing yards. That's outstanding year. 20, over 20 touchdowns and two INTs, that's outstanding year. That's outstanding ratio, touchdown and ratio 10 on one. That's outstanding. That's what you want from your quarterback position. Take care of the football. Now, in 2020, in the short season, he came back with 12 touchdowns and two INTs. Six to one. Another outstanding ratio. This guy is just elite at taking care of the football. So he won't put, he, he's not going to make risky throws. He's going, he knows their offense. That's what, that's another thing he tells me. He tells me he really has a high understanding of their offense. What the coaching staff is asking, is trying to get him to do. It's asking him, it's asking for him to do. And he executes. He's a smart guy. He doesn't take chances. And he, he will go for the safe play more often than not. That's what that tells me with the ratio like that. The guy has been a very good college quarterback. No one got to watch out for him. And he's a dual threat quarterback. He had a couple of good runs against Texas a and last week against Iowa. So, and, but he really destroyed VMI. But he, he's supposed to destroy VMI. But again, he's a dual threat quarterback that can take off and run. He has good enough wheels that he can take off and run for massive yards if we had some of the blown coverages we had last week against Illinois this week. Now let's go to their playmakers. Number one, my Chris Cooper. A local kid from Maryland, get this from Maryland, Chris Archer. A kid that wanted to go to Maryland, but he was too small. Too many of these kids wanted Maryland, but they were too small. And, and that was the right call by Maryland. Because clearly, when we didn't take them, no other um, power fight team took them. Because we were, we were right about them. They were too small for this level. Now, he's 5'7", 185 pounds. True sophomore, right? So far this year, he has 30 rushes for 199 yards. 6.6 .6 yards a carry and one touchdown. He's the leading rusher. And not just in carries and in, in, uh, in yards, in yards per carry, and in touchdowns with one touchdown. Okay, 30 carries, 199 yards, which is 6.6 .6 yards a carry, one touchdown. This kid is almost getting the first down every time he touches the ball. That's outstanding. Very shifty, short guy. You can barely see him in that line. And I told you, they was for over 200 yards at um, Texas a which means the line has attitude. When you when you put an attitude uh, off all line with with attitude with a, a, a little guy you can't see behind them, it's gonna be problems for the linebacker and safety. It's gonna be very 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 important for our linebacker and safety to to really key in on him and find him quickly in that line before he break loose, because he's shifty enough and quick enough to break a couple of long ones on us. All right, now. Another guy that they, they, they like, a guy who transferred from Syracuse. I told you, the head coach is, a, is the ex-coordinator from Syracuse. And his name is Nikem Johnson. Now, this guy should have stayed at Syracuse, to be honest with you. Because he was a ACC honorable mention as a special team returner. He had two return touchdowns as a true freshman in Syracuse. This kid should have stayed at Hughes. They just, let's, just be, let's just be honest with it. He should have stayed at Hughes. I don't know why he left. Maybe his offensive corner left and got the job at Kent State and decided to, to go with him. But he should have stayed at Cuse. Because he was a playmaker in that Syracuse offense in those two years he was there. Now, I told you guys, he was a honorable mention as a returner in the ACC. So again, Maryland special team is another week with another good returner we got to watch out for. Week one, we got killed by West Virginia guy. This week, is a, he is a guy with legit 4-4 speed. This kid can legit run 4-4. So if Maryland leave gaps in the special team, there is a kid that can take advantage of that can break an 80-yard kick return, punt return, or 90-yard kick return touchdown. So we got a really zone in on the number 82, Nike Johnson. He's a transfer from Syracuse. This year so far, he has 13 catches for 105 yards, just 8.1 yards a catch and one touchdown. He hasn't really exploded yet, but this kid is capable of explosion because he's an explosive athlete, a local kid from Washington, D.C., just 5'8", 170 pounds. This kid went to college about 170 pounds. He's still 107 pounds. What that tells me is he he, he he does not want to play football. Football is not that important to him because there's no way you come to college 170 pounds three, four years ago. You, as a junior and almost a senior now, you're still 170 pounds. You got to get bigger, bro. What are you doing? You ain't going to play at that level. And, 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 and you ain't going to be, you, you know, clearly he don't want to get paid playing football. That's what that tells me. Because if he does, he was serious about it. He could have put on at least 10, 15 more pounds by now. Because speed-wise, he's elite. Now, Kim Johnson, I know a lot about him. The kid can play. He's the same high school as um, um, Demas. He went to the same high school as Demas, Francis College. So I know a lot about Nat Kim Johnson, right, guys? He can play. Another kid that wanted to go to Maryland coming out of high school. But we, we took Demas in that class, and clearly it was the right decision.
See what you want about the previous coaching staff. They did a good job bringing talent. Some of the some of the guys we had upperclassmen we have now that have full potential. It was our previous staff that did that. All right. Number 20, uh, Daniel Bangura, a running back. 5'10, 185 junior. Um, eight, eight, um, eight, eight rushes for 80 yards this year. Um, he's that really he's like that third down, he's like that third running back on the depth chart. So he has eight rushes, 80, uh, 80 yards, and one touchdown. So again, he's very fast. That's over 10, that's literally 10 yards a carry. He had eight rushes, 80 yards, that's 10 yards a carry and one touchdown. So extremely explosive kid, but he had most of his yards against VMI. So I really don't know uh, if they're really going to play this kid much this week. All right. Um, another one that I, I like um, I like is senior number two, another grand, a grand senior, a grad senior. I told you they have like five, six of these guys in the two deep and offense and defense. Met all over the offense and defense and the O line too. Now, Xavier Williams, number two, running back, 30 runs, 165 yards, 5.5 yards a carry. This is the second, um, this is the second guy in the running back that chart. The second back, number two, um, Xavier, uh, Xavier Williams, all right, 30 rushes, 165 yards, just 5.5 yards a carry, and no touchdowns so far this year, all right. Now, again. And uh, not really a big kid. Most of the playmakers are not really big. Five now, 190 pounds. So he's like basically the biggest running back they have on the team. All right? And he's the, third, he's the second string back. Now, number 19, the backup quarterback. Now, I've noticed in previous games they use him a lot. They like to bring him in a lot and change pace. And just to change the pace. So Maryland got to scheme up on him. He's more of a dual, to a, he's more of a dual uh, runner. More of the runner than Crum is. Um... His, uh, his name is Colin Sheehy, Sh 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 Come, uh, Colin Shley, 6'3", 2018-pound uh, kid from Maryland, from um, um, a local kid from Maryland. He's their backup quarterback, number 19, sophomore. But then I got to watch out for him. They'll actually bring him in, like, uh, something during the game, at some point during the game, just to change the pace a little bit. All right? He's when he comes in, he's trying to run, all right? He's throwing a couple of passes this year, but when he comes in, he's trying to run, all right? Now, number 14... Dante Cyphers, uh, 6'1", 178 pound uh, receiver from Pennsylvania, sophomore. Again, most of their playmakers are small. 6'1", is probably one of the bigger guys they have, uh, 178 pounds. Seven catches on the year for 83 yards, 11.9, no touchdowns, all right? Um, freshman, true freshman, number 81, Dante S. Walker, a kid we got to watch out for. Uh, this kid can really run. Now, he hasn't had many catches yet, but... I saw him in it doing his recruiting, some of his highlights. The kid can really, really run. He can get behind our defense. going to be a problem, all right? Three catches, 43 yards so far in the year, just 14.3 yards. Again, 14.3 yards a catch. That's that's a big play receiver. He's 6'3", 175 pounds. This kid right here is one of those kids that uh, Coastal Carolina recruited. I followed this kid very well, uh, Duvates Walker uh, from North Carolina. Coastal Carolina really wanted him. We decided to go to um, freaking what's the school called Kent State because Kent State has had a pretty good um, they've had pretty good success on the uh, in the current staff um, at Kent State they've had pretty good success so he is basically a result of uh, Kent State being good the last few years you don't get kids like this unless you've been good especially away from Coastal Carolina a team that's ranked in the top ten all right in the top twenty five I mean in the country all right. Um, another kid I want you guys to really um, to remember is a kid that I, I forgot earlier because I'm about to get I'm about to get to the defense now. But there's one more kid on offense that I have to mention, and that's Abrams, Keyshawn Abrams, number 80. So again, number 80, Keyshawn Abrams, number 81, and number 82, Nikem Johnson. Those guys are dangerous. Those are the receivers. Dangerous guys, very shifty guys. Not very the biggest guys, but they're very shifty and they have the speed to take us out of the house. All right. Now, this guy here, Keyshawn Abrams, is their biggest receiver. He's 6'2", 193 pounds. Their biggest guy, their most massive guy, the strongest guy. 6'2", 193 pounds. Last week against Iowa, he went the fuck off. Against one of the better defensive rooms, defensive uh, backfields in the entire country. That Iowa DB room is just as good as ours, all right? So, and for him to go off last week, it was a red flag. It was a sign that we got to come in lock in this week. And mind you, we have Deontay Banks not playing this week either. So he's seeing out another week. So our, our top corner is not even playing, but we have enough DB depth to where we should be able to contain these guys, all right? Not just contain them, we should be able to dominate the matchups against this team. I take it back, all right? But this is a good team now. So if they're going to win their matchups. They're going to win a share of their matchups. But again, last week, 
On the season, this kid has 10 catches for 167 yards, 16.7 yards a catch and one touchdown. But most of that production came last week against Iowa, where he had six catches, 138 yards, 23 yards a catch and one touchdown. The longest one was a 48 yard bomb. All right. So again, that's at Iowa against a very good DB room that I was always put as good DBs. They know how to coach DB, uh, DBs over there. So for him to go off like that was a sign that Maryland got paid attention to these guys. Because Nikim, Nikim Johnson, number 81, number 82, he can go up just like that. So now with him be putting that shit on film, you're going to create more of matchup issues for Maryland now deciding which guys to key on. Because you can't leave this guy one-on-one -on -one all day long. He's proven he can beat good DBs. All right. Again, six catches for 138 yards, 23 yards a catch, one touchdown last week at Iowa. That's impressive to me, man. All right, six to 197, 193 pounds, the biggest wide receiver on the outside. Grass senior again, many of those seniors, the kids from Mississippi, Keshawn Abrams. All right. Now let's take you guys to their defense. Now I'm gonna first. I'm gonna start with the D line. Then I'm gonna walk my way up to the probably their best room, which is their DB room. Outstanding DB room with these guys. The cornerbacks and safeties are their it guys. The the best players are those guys. So we're gonna have to really key in when we throw the ball. We gotta make sure to really gotta make sure you throw accurate passes this week more than more than any other week. Because these guys got better hug, ball hugs than any team we've played so far. But but, but when I, when you click the film, that's the one thing that jumps out at you. These guys attack the ball. When you when you when you, when you throw the ball in the air, they really believe it's 50-50. And that's how you gotta play the best DBs I've known that play the ball in the air. When they when that ball is in the air, they think they have a 50% chance of getting it just as much as the receiver do. So Maryland gotta be very accurate this week. We can't afford tip passes, none of those. Don't drop the ball, catch the ball when it hits your hands, all right? Definitely don't tip it in the air. These guys will get it. Okay, now their defense. Where can I start? Defense. Defense, defense, defense. Okay, let me go start with CJ West, number 50. I'm going to start with CJ West, number 50, sophomore. The biggest dude on their defense. This dude stand right in the middle and no tackle. Most of the time, teams have to double team him. But we, even in week one against Texas a and they figured out they had to double team this kid or because they couldn't move him with one block. All right? CJ West, 6'2", 330-pound kid. The kid is fucking massive from Illinois. All right? Sophomore again. On the year, he has eight total tackles, four solo tackles. Last in the week one against Anum, like I told you guys, he was dominant. He had five tackles, one sack, including one tackle for loss. He had one sack, one tackle for loss, and five total tackles at Texas AM, a top ten team at that house. It got to a point in the second half, they doubled him. They had to double him. And that's why they they one once they were able to get him out of the way and stop uh, and minimize his game, they were able to basically wear out their linebackers and safeties with the run in the second half. All right, so again, CJ West, number 50, massive motherfucking kid, all right? 6'2", 330, sophomore. So he's gonna be there, he's gonna be around there for a while. This kid is a demon, all right, guys? We gotta really watch out for him because if we can't move him in the middle, we won't be able to run the ball in the middle on these guys, all right? We're gonna have to find a way to move him, all right, guys? Now, another D-line man that I, that I wanna talk about here, they have a couple of deep good ones, all right? Number zero. Number zero, nah, he didn't play his first two weeks. Last week against Iowa was his first game. I don't know if he was hurt the first two weeks, but that family showed against Iowa. To me, he's a better player than Wes was. Wes is just a big kid that you can't move. But he's not really as athletic, as harder to block as this kid here. This kid named Zion West, number zero. The defensive end. Real good player, man. Zion West is a real, real, real good player. Six foot, 263 pounds from Virginia. Midlothian. So this kid here, they have a bunch of DMV kids. That's another thing I need to put in there. So these kids, they can't wait to come to Maryland. All these local DMV kids, they're going to be excited playing at Maryland. More so than fear or nervousness. That None of that going to be a problem with this guy. They're going to be excited. So Maryland got to watch out, man. In fact, now, the more I, I'm talking about this team, the more I know Maryland going to be a popular upset pick this week. Folks, we're going to be a very popular offset pick this week, and that's okay. When you watch this team, they can play now. They can play. But it's also a chance for us to prove we for real, because we blow this motherfucker out. Worse than the, uh, Iowa beat them. It will be a media, media sign up, because next week we'll play Iowa. If we can beat these guys worse than the way Iowa beat them, oh, it's on next week. It's on. So, again, 
we won't be a popular upset pick this week. And that's okay because this team can play enough. They're good enough to beat us. Again, DN number zero, Zane West. Good player. All right? Five total tackles last week, including three solo tackles at Iowa. All right? He was he was all up in there giving Iowa offensive line the problems all game long. Now, Iowa running back, one of them did rush for over 150 yards, but it was mostly on the outside runs. They could not get the ball in the middle on these guys. All right? So now let me go to the, some of the better players. Now, the better, better playmakers on defense. These guys are the it players on their defense. These guys, these are the guys we have to watch out for. We cannot let them beat us. Two players. First of all, their safeties are elite. I got to say that again. But their best room is their cornerback room. Both guys could play professionally, but they're a little bit small. So that's that might be the only thing that's going to keep them from the league. But in terms of college players, fantastic college players, man. These cornerbacks. Start with Martre Miller, number 21, cornerback. 5'10", 185-pound junior from South Carolina. On the year, he has 11 total tackles, 9 solo tackles. He had one first fumble, 3 INTs, and 1 pass breakup, including 2 picks at um, Texas A&M week one. This kid had two INTs week one against Texas A&M. Montreal Miller, number 21. He's a ball player now. 5'10", 183 pounds from South Carolina Jr. 11 total tackles, 9 solo, 1 first fumble, 3 INTs, and 1 pass breakup. This kid can play the football now. All right? He's a ball hawk. He is a ball hawk. If you throw Aaron passes against this team, they will be get picked up. I guess other teams... You said they're going to land. There's a good chance they'll trust the ground. I guess these guys, there's a good chance they'll head up in one of their hands. I'm a fact, so most of the time when the ball is in the air, these guys don't even play the ball. They don't even play the man. They go for the ball just in case the quarterback throw an area pass. So we really got to be careful this week, all right? Because these guys are ball getters. They go get the ball. Number 14 is another guy we got to watch out for. Montreal Miller is one, number 21, number 14. They're two opposite corners. On their two, two outside corners. Now, Elvin Hines, number 14, is more of the slug guy. But he's just as dangerous as Montreal Miller is on the outside. On the year, he has six total tackles, five solo tackles, three pass breakups. It means to tell me this kid can play the ball. He's very good when the ball is in the air. Three pass breakups already and three INTs. So again, they had they, they have about nine INTs on the year. Six of them are between two guys, two 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 of their corners. Number twenty one, number fourteen. Maryland gotta watch out for those motherfuckers. Number twenty one, number fourteen on defense. Gotta watch out for those guys. When we're on offense, we gotta watch out for those guys. When they're on defense, guys. Fourteen and twenty one, good ball players. Number five, another cornerback. This guy's the the other outside corner. Five nine. 185 pounds. Now, Elvis Hines, number 14, that I'm talking about is more of a slot. He's only 5'10", 174 pounds. That's why I say he's more of a slot guy. But don't be surprised if he match up on the outside with some of uh, with Rakim Jarrett this game. All right? Now, number five, Kid, uh, Kid Sherrill Jr., 5'9", uh, 185 pounds, well, from Waldorf, Maryland, 181 pounds from Waldorf, Maryland, senior, a grad, another grad senior. On the year, he has total, nine total tackles, five solos, and one pass breakup, one tackle for loss at Iowa. He had one pass breakup and one tackle for loss at Iowa last week. So he's coming in with more confidence than he has all year. So, again, this is, these are their guys, man. These are their guys. Number 28, uh, Manny Lawrence Burke, linebacker, just six foot, 200 pounds. On the year, he has eight total tackles, seven solo. Including last week, just at Iowa, he had eight. He had all his tackles. Basically, he's another guy that didn't play the first two games that came back. So Zion, uh, what is his name? Zion West, the number zero, and number twenty-eight. Um, what's his name? And number twenty-eight, Manny Burke. Both didn't play the two previous games. They came back last week and had very product productive game. This kid had eight total tackles last week against Iowa, four solo, including two tackles for us at, at Iowa last week. So again, very good linebacker, Twitchy, very small, but he's only six foot two hundred pounds. So again, we, if we get past their D line, the linebacker should not pose problem for us on the run game. We should be able to pound them. They're very small on the linebacker position. All right. Now another guy we should watch out for safety. I told you the safeties are pretty good. Now this kid right here played more of their rover position, which means you're gonna see him cover our tight ends and our running backs side the backfield a lot. He's more of a linebacker safety slash kind of role. All right. 
So on the year, he has 20 total tackles. He's basically the leading tackler. And safety being the leading tackler, all right? Six foot, 211 pounds from Ohio. Junior, number three, all right? He's the leading tackler. Number three is the leading tackler. So he has 20 total tackles, 11 tackles, 11 solo tackles, and one pass breakup on the year, all right? Dean Clark. And then, of course, Mussolini, um, the, what is it? The A.J. Mussolino. O.J. Mussolino is the linebacker, number 19, another grad senior. Small is the linebacker, is a very small, 6'3", just 209 from Ohio. Again, on the year, he has 13 total tackles, which is second on the team. He had eight solo tackles. Last week in week one against Texas A&M, he went off. He has six tackles, one tackle for loss, and one sack against, against Texas A&M. So, again, the linebackers played very good week one against Texas A&M. D-line and linebacker front seven played very well against Texas A&M, and they've been playing very well all year long. So they have a very good D-line and very good corners and safeties. That's what Maryland got watching. The linebackers are not very good. They're very small. So if you can get past their massive D-line, you can get, you can absolutely destroy these guys. We can absolutely destroy these guys' um, back line, all right? The back side of the defense. Now, um, okay. okay, I mentioned all these guys. Nico Bolden, safety, 6'3", 215. He's a transfer from Youngstown State. 14 tackles on the year. He's second on the team in tackles. So, actually, it's, yeah, he's second on the team in tackles. One INT and nine. Um, so, he's a safety with one INT. He has one of their nine INTs on the season. So, again, guys, we got to watch out for it on the defense. Number three, um, number three, number zero, number 28, number 50. I'm gonna, I have to name the numbers and then... And the name so you guys can remember them. Number three, Dean Clark. Safety is a problem. Number zero, uh, Zane West is a problem. All right. And the end. Uh, number 19, AJ Mussolino, linebacker. Um, he's a problem. He's, 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 third, he's, second, he's third on the team in tackles this year. Uh, number 50, CJ West is a problem. All right. And um, yes, CJ West is a problem. Number 14, Alvin Hines is a problem. Number 21, Montrez Miller. And number five, Kit Sherrills. Their defense is going to be a problem. And on offense, number seven, which is Crumb. Number one, Marquez Cooper. Number 82, um, Nakeem Johnson. And number 80, Abrams. Those guys are their playmates. We keen on those numbers. Merlin should walk away with a, with a, with a good-ass win against a team that have competed against two top 10 ball clubs at their place. So if Merlin can find a way to control those playmakers they have on the outside, because that's their key. The offense is all about grinding power and trying to expose you uh, with play action. So if Merlin can control those guys, and then on third down, unlike last week, we had a lot of coverage um, breakdowns. We cannot have that this week because their quarterback can really run. If we have, if we, if we play a lot of man, so if we, go, if we play all that man coverage, a linebacker's got to make sure somebody get the running back and somebody's accounted for, for the quarterback running. So if we, if, we, if, we, if we do those things, we should be able to stop these guys with ease, all right? Because the outside playmakers are not really that big, and we have big corners, and we are capable of playing man-to-man -man against anybody in this country, all right? I expect this is a game I expect Nick Cross to come down in the box a little bit more to make sure the quarterback doesn't take up running. You're going to see Nick, Pro Nick Cross take the running back a lot and the quarterback a lot on those quarterback run options, all right? So I expect... Um, this is a, a front seven kind of game for our front seven to dominate um, on both sides of the ball. Linebackers, um, this, it's time for you guys to have a, a bounce back game. I feel like last year, last week against Illinois, you had a lot of missed run fits. You're coming down in the wrong, just leaving your run fits way too early. We can't have that. We got to be patient. Let the ball come to us. All right, guys, on defense. All right, and on offense, our offensive line. You guys got to protect your ear. Like these guys, their biggest thing is their D-line. They have a 330-pound dude in their D-line, C.J. West. And then um, Zion West is not too bad either on the outside, number zero. So those guys are going to give us problems. But if we can contain those guys, the linebackers, are, uh, none of them are over 210 pounds. We should be able to pound these guys and wear them out by the early second quarter, third quarter, guys. All right? Now, we got the key to this game, again, is... Keep keep the playmakers from um, the speed guys from making plays on the outside. Don't get beat one on one. Certainly, don't give up the bomb. All right. If you get beat one on one, it'll be short passes and come up and tackle. Don't get beat with bomb. All right. And then uh, on defense, don't turn the ball over. Watch out for those tip passes. Make sure you don't tip the pass over the middle. And totally be very accurate. 
It's the way he needs to be extremely accurate um, with his passes. Now, as long as you protect them, we should be able to move the ball on these guys because they don't really, they're not really big on the outside on the defenders. They're very smallest. Demos can absolutely eat this week. He can absolutely eat this week against these guys. Throw a bunch of short passes, post these small corners to come up and tackle us. So I like to see um, Rakim Jerry get involved in the short passing game, a little bit more screens, wide receiver screens. I want to see a lot of those. Chigozium, I want to see a lot of receiver screens because their DB group is very small. Why they all know how to play the ball. They're very good playmakers. They, they, I don't think they really like coming down and tackling too much. When you have dudes that small, the tackling won't be the ideal situation, all right? Some of them will, will stick their head in there every now and then, but tackling will not be the ideal situation. The weather, the weather play the ball in the air than attack you. So Maryland got to force these guys to tackle, all right? And if we get past their D-line, it's going to be a fun day for us making these guys. I can't wait to see the matchup, trying to see how these guys can tackle our guys, all right? A guy like Demas and Rakim on the outside, and then you have um, a guy like Chigozium and tight end. I can't, I can't wait to see how this team, this small-ass DB room they have can, can match up with that physical uh demons we have on the outside all right guys now jason jones another guy that i think can explode this week in the slot area because again their guys are not that big all right they can play the ball though so we gotta make sure every pass we throw is accurate and we cannot have tip passes guys all right watch out for the fumbles again don't give this team a life if you have a chance to put their uh, foot in their ass and their throat i hope we do it all right it's not the team you want to have hang around this team's offense is better than Illinois' offense. They have better skill players than Illinois has, all right? So if we make the mistakes, this team will make us pay, all right? So again, guys, another outstanding weekend, week four. I can't wait for this ball game, Maryland. Kent State at Maryland. And I just checked um, on Twitter. Our scoreboard should be up this week against um, Kent State. If not, I would actually want it to be up against Iowa because the Iowa game has a chance to be one of the better home crowds we've had in a long, long time if we can take care of this weekend. And especially if we can take care of this weekend in an impressive fashion and build the hype up, next week's weekend against Iowa is going to be absolutely hype because we, I guarantee you if we can take care of this week against this, this Kent State team and look good doing it, we're going to be in the top 25 when the posts come out on Monday, guys. So, Again, it's all about taking care of what's in front of us right now. It's high work. It's, it's Kent State team. A very, very hard football team full of upperclassmen. These guys have been playing together for three, four years. They won't be not into it. And there's a lot of DMV guys in, in their roster, in the 2D. These guys, if anything, they're excited to come play at Maryland. So we really got to be careful for that. For those homecoming kind of guys, man, they've always give us issues, man. We got to watch out for that. So... Hopefully, we can come in early and smack them. That's what you do with a team like this. It's going to come in highly confident. You have to smack them early. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you even got to put their quarterback out early to let them know this is not going to be that kind of game where you guys going to hang around all day and upset us in the end. You ain't going to be that game. So, Maryland, I want to see this team come out and show last week's mistake when we had a chance to put uh, Illinois' team away in their place. We fumbled the ball. Hopefully, we don't make those kind of mistakes this week. When we have a chance to put our foot in their ass, we stump them the fuck out. All right? You go elephant stump on their ass. All right, guys. I'm so excited about this about this team, this roster. And I can't wait for uh, some of the, the guys who have injured, dealing with injuries right now to come back. Got, got, a guy, like I mentioned, uh, Deontay Banks coming back. And that's silly kid. Uh, our D-line hasn't even been a full strength. Hopefully, these guys can be full strength closer to conference play. That's when we're really going to need them. All right? Now, so the kids had this nagging toe issue since West Virginia. Hopefully, this week, we'll make it react the way we need it to react. Because we need that kid in Big Ten play. Right? But can we? This, it's a big test this week for our D-line, for our front seven on both sides, for our offensive line. It's a big test against a very physical D-line. All right? That plays hard. All right? Sometimes D-line work is all about playing hard. If you play hard, you're going to be, chances are you're going to be a very destructive D-line. All right? So, again, go motherfucking tops and no one else. All right, guys? And you already know the Ravens win this week will beat the motherfucking Chiefs. Like I said, shout out to Lamar. And now we got the Lions this week. Lamar, my motherfucking set records this week. But knock on woods, inshallah, he stay healthy. That's the number one thing. Keep our quarterbacks healthy. Keep Lamar healthy. Keep Tolia healthy. Both guys stay healthy. This Both football teams have a chance to be special later on in the season. All right, guys? Go motherfucking Maryland, no one else. And go motherfucking Terps, nigga. Yeah.